Okay, you should be able to see the PowerPoint now. Is that working? Yes. Yeah. 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 Great. So if you have questions, please ask them. Um, otherwise, I just go on talking and talking. So if there's a question, please tell me. And I can um, see, before you go on, I'm just telling you, I have a big screen and I can see all of you in a thumbnail view. So if you're waving your hand, I'll spot you. Ah, great. So you can tell me then. Yeah. Okay. Um, some time ago, during a morning coffee hour, um, someone showed a homemade um, tool and there was a request for more homemade tools. So I thought of showing you my um, tools for homemade tools for small turnings. Okay, just to give you an example, what I use them for, this is um, a spinning top and it's um, designed as a box so you can unscrew the lid and it will work as a spinning top as well because uh, you can put your string through here and then a holder wind up the string and then draw the string and it will start spinning. So that is not very small. It's about a bit more than three inches tall. But if you open it inside, there are smaller spinning tops and these are about an inch. So, um, and this one, for example, has got a captured ring as well which you can see here. And I made some tools for small turning and also for making this small captured ring. Well, um, I'm blown away already, Kai, that's fabulous. <laughs> it is, wow. Thanks. <laughs> okay, um, another thing I make is um, jewelry. And these are little glass bottles. The opening here at the um, lower part of the cork is a quarter of an inch. So um, the spinning top design has to be adjusted so that it fits through there. And they have got captured rings as well. And they do really spin, but only for a short time because the mass is really low. And so if you start them, they will spin fast, but only for a short time. Okay, so that's what I need the, the tools for and now how they are uh, made. I use mostly um, round high-speed steel bars, um, which you can buy on eBay, for example. Um, they, those that I use mostly come from China and they are not really expensive, maybe about a dollar or two dollars um, a piece, depending on the length and the diameter, you get more expensive ones as well. And they also come as square or flat bars. So you can use them to make um, other tools as well that are not round. Is there any particular grade of high-speed steel or if it's marked high-speed HSS, it's good enough? Um, it's good enough for wood turning um, as it metal is, is harder than wood anyway. And I have the experience that the material you get from China um, holds the the edge quite well. So um, of course there are better qualities, but they are more interesting for metal turning maybe than for um, woodwork. So the cheap stuff from China is okay for my um, purposes. Okay, so that's what you can use them for. For example, this is a little parting tool that um, I ground from square stock. Um, a little skew chisel that I ground from round stock. And this is um, a scraper. So I crown a scraper profile at both ends of this um, HHS bit. Okay. Um, that's what you have to watch out for when you grind them. Is there a question? Yes. Do you hold Do you hold them with your hand, or do you slip them into a tool handle? Um, I made special kind of handles for them for grinding them, which I will show later on. Yeah. Okay. The good question, <laughs> because in the beginning I actually tried to hold them by hand, but it's um, sometimes it's a bit tricky to get it right. And sometimes it's a bit dangerous um, if they are really short and you hold them by hand. So um, it's better to uh, put them into something to hold them. Yeah. 
Okay, so the grinding. Um, they, as all scrapers, they need to have some kind of angle at the front, for example. So that might be 10 degrees or something like this, so that you have 80 degrees here and 10 degrees here um, at the cutting angle. And then I um, grind the sides a little bit back to get some um, relief on the sides. If you imagine your tool in a gap that you put a parting tool into, then you don't want the sides of the tool to touch um, your groove that you are uh, making. So that's why they are ground back a little bit on the sides. Why a little bit? Do you mean five degrees, 10 degrees? Yeah, I think five degrees will do. 10 degrees is okay as well. Because you don't use the sides for cutting, uh, it doesn't matter that much. And the front angle, what angle are you using there? Um, about um, 80 degrees, maybe. You could do 85 or 75. It will still work, I guess. Yeah, it depends a bit on the hardness of the wood um, that you use the tool for. The harder the wood, um, the steeper the, um, the angle that you want <clears throat> so that it lasts for a while. OK, um, an example is this recess tool. Um, here you can see the um, profile that I have just shown. If you look from the front, so the sides are relieved. Um, that's the, the top view. And here you can see the side view. So that's the, the cutting angle. Yeah, it's a bit out of focus, this photo on the right hand side, but I think you know what I mean. Um, Right, and that's the, the use of the recess tool. Um, if you do um, hand thread chasing, um, you need a recess here so that your chaser doesn't hit um, the um, lid of your bowl and rips off the, the threads. Um, How thick is that piece of metal? Um, this here, how, how thick it is? The, the, the overall piece of metal, how thick is it? Ah. Okay, um, let me see. It's maybe um, an inch wide mm -hmm. and um, four millimeters. Um, Fat eighth. An eighth of an inch, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch thick. Okay. Okay, and that's for um, shaping and sharpening the tool tips. Um, I put an extra wide um, or large. Um, rest onto um, my old um, grinder so that I can also use the sides for grinding, which you actually shouldn't do. People always tell you, but if you have these very small tools and you touch it just lightly, um, it's okay for me. And also, of course, the, the front and I can, if you um, grind round profile onto scrapers, you can just start at one side of the scraper and then move it in an arc all around here so that you get a nice round um, tip. Another thing you can do is put the, um, the HHS or the high speed bar into a vise and then use some kind of Dremel tool or Proxim tool to um, shape it. And um, okay. Jim asked earlier on, these are um, holders for these HHS bars for the round ones, mm -hmm. so that it's um, easier to put them onto this flat surface of the, the grinder and keep one angle and it doesn't kind of roll over like the, the round one um, would do or the round bar would do. Yeah. Um, so that makes it much easier. Um, Did you make those or are those purchased? No, I made those um, on my lathe. So I just um, let the lathe run at a low speed and then um, I um, drilled these holes and then tapped um, some holes for these grub screws to, to hold the, um, the bars. Um, I also made some jigs for my Tormac, but the Tormac isn't that good for, for shaping the tips, except you have very small tools. Um, so that's more for, for sharpening. And I made them for uh, at different angles for skewed chisels, little skewed chisels, and um, also with a straight edge. 
and that's how I use them. I put them onto the um, the grinding rest, I think you call it, of the, the Tormac. And there is one um, piece of wood down here, then another block um, glued to it that has the same thickness as the tool rest and then this piece on top. So that's the, the bottom piece. That's kind of the, the spacer and that's the top piece. And, oh, wrong uh -huh. direction, sorry. And also I use, um, a clamp to to hold it in position so that it doesn't move forwards and backwards and that's my holder that i showed earlier on or one of them and then i put the the um, bar into it so i can sharpen it this one hasn't got a cutting edge i just put it for photo purposes in there so that you get the idea and then i just have to um to push um this jig against the um this little platform here um and then move it from left to right and it keeps the angle and it works really nice. Um, this is a pointy tool. Some people call it a three corner tool. I don't know why, where the three corners are, but, um, and that's also homemade. The, the ferrule is homemade from Pras, and that's another um, bit of um, high speed steel bar. And in engineering, first I try to, to grind these tools freehand. But for me, it was quite difficult to get three flat sides um, on, onto the tool um, and have a nice point. So an engineering friend came up with the idea to use this um, hex bar here and he drilled a hole into it for me. And if I start in this position, then leave out one flat and put it on this position or that goes on the table then um, for grinding the second flat and then leave out this one and put this flat onto the tool rest for, for grinding Good the idea. third flat I get a really nice point and that works really nicely. That's a very clever little uh, that's a very yeah. good idea and you could make that out of wood too. Yep. You just have to think of a way to um, to put in the screws that Very hold the bar into position. Yeah, but there should be some some way to do that. Very Maybe price, I see. Insert or something like that. Sorry, Barry, you asking a question? Barry, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't ask a question. No. Okay. okay, we thought you were That's waving around. <laughs> oh so I just, no! I just had my hand. Agree, sir. I'm saying. <laughs> Thank Barry. Um, Back to Kai. Okay. Barry can make something like that. Oh, well, Barry can make something like that. Yes, for sure. Oh, it's always <laughs> yeah. good to have metal workers in your club who yeah. can help you. <laughs> Barry has a very nice metalworking club. Good. So, and then once you've ground them to shape, you can use um, diamond hones to um, resharpen them. Or, so you don't have to grind them all the time. That is much quicker and takes only away a little bit of metal and you still can still maintain the, the point of the, the tool. Kai, so, have you ever uh, considered a means of making a uh, beading tool? Uh, I'm, I've been trying to do that and it requires, I guess, like a radius edged grinding disc, like say a quarter inch thick grinding disc uh, you know, to grind the uh, the half round, to grind the flute, uh, uh -huh. to uh, out of rectangular bar, uh, mm -hmm. to make uh, a beading tool. Barry, I I did that with some diamond tools that you can get for your Dremel. What do I, you mean? You you the diamond tool to grind the trough? Yeah, it's there. Uh, they fit in a Dremel and they're about an inch and a half long. You get a whole set of them. They're pretty inexpensive too, but they, it works well once you have it. I took a, foul, a triangular file and made, started it and then just used the Dremel tool with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice coming actually, up with something like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually um, ground um, a hook tool for, for turning out of um, this um, high speed steel bar. Um, and used um, the, um, the Dremel tool and also these little diamond um, tools 
Um, I got inexpensive ones from China. They don't last that long, but then once one is blunt, you take the next one, they are very low cost. So, and it took me about three hours to, to grind this, um, this hook tool. I can show <laughs> it sometime, um, but I don't know whether it's worth it, but uh, I just wanted to try whether it's possible. Okay, just let me go on with the, the small tools then. Um, this is a ring tool. And here I use the, the disc in the, in the oh. Dremel tool to grind this little round um, bit here. That's pretty yeah. close to what you're asking about, Barry. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I was looking more at like at a, uh, you know, a longitudinal flute down like say an inch of the, the back that you would put uh, face down mm -hmm. to make a uh, beading tool. I'm thinking of a beading tool that was demonstrated uh, a few weeks ago on that uh, uh, professional demonstration where the gentleman made Southwest baskets. I'm uh, Harvey uh, Meyer, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is a a gouge I um, or I turned or made a ferrule and a handle for this gouge because it was far too long. It came in a set of miniature turning tools, but it was far too long and there was a lot of vibration in there. So I made that ferrule here and took the, um, the um, gouge out of the original wooden handle and put it in here. So now I can push it in as far as possible and hold it with these screws. And the overhang is smaller here and it doesn't um, vibrate that easily. So um, that's another modification maybe. It's not a homemade tool. Another good idea. So um, these are the, the tool handles. They've got this brass ferrule here. I took a photo of a metal ferrule that a metal engineering friend made for me for a bigger tool, just to give you an idea. Um, but brass is um, quite soft and you can scrape brass um, with um, high-speed steel tools on the lace if you are patient. Um, so I'm, I made something that look similar in um, like, like this one or to this one. It also has got a step here. So I can put it into the, the wooden handle and this, this bit goes into the hole here that I drilled. And this bit also gets um, to holes for crab screws so that I can hold the tool. And I drilled the handle so that I can um, push the um, metal um, bar a little bit into it um, so that I can control the, the overhang and just pu pull it out as much as I need um, uh -huh. or as necessary. Do you find that an insert like that really changes the balance of the handle with a pretty heavy piece there? Yeah, it makes it heavier, but that's not a disadvantage, I think. Sometimes um, it even takes a bit of vibration out of it, I think. Uh, so it's, um, for me, it's, it's all right. I know even with small um, spindle gouges, I kind of like the aluminum inserts because the steel ones just tend to make the tool too heavy, but. Okay, aluminum would be another possibility. And I think that should be possible to work on a, on a wood turning lathe as well, if you're patient. It's soft enough or should be soft enough. Okay, and these are tiny ring tools that are ground out of nails. These were for these um, <laughs> um, jewelry things that are put into the little glass bottles, the, the um, spinning tops. Um, and here I wanted to ask you whether you have got something similar in the States. Um, the tool consists of four parts. One is a, a file handle. Of course, you could turn a, a handle yourself as well. Um, then this kind of screw, which yes. I found is called a stair bolt. Is that right? Is yeah. it a stair bolt? Yeah. So I screw that into the handle. Then I have this um, threaded sleeve, which is used in installation in, in Germany. So I put that on there. And then we have these special nails. They are a bit old fashioned, but they are still produced. Um, they have got um, a thread here that fits into the um, threaded sleeve. And then I can grind the 
tip to the desired shape. And once it breaks or it gets too short, I just unscrew it and put another nail in there and then I can grind a new tip to it. And these nails in Germany are called obo dübel. I guess that's a plug in English. So obo plugs. And they were originally used in electrical installation. Um, these nails were either hammered or shot into um, the wall. And then the, um, the cable um, clip was screwed onto, yeah, you can see how they do it. Yeah, they screw it onto the, um, the thread that sticks out of the wall. And then they put their cable um, under the, the clip. Do you have something like that in the States or is that uncommon? I think there's quite a bit of hardware like that if you look around, yeah. Yes, it's technically called a Nelson stud and they can be shot into concrete as well with a uh, ram set, which uses yeah. a 22 cartridge to fire it into the concrete. So it's called a Nelson stud, S-T-U-D, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. I'm asking because I um, thought of writing a little tip maybe for um, the American wood turner or wood turning fundamentals or something like this. And then that it only makes sense if the, the hardware is available in the States as well. Kai, Just, that, that one bolt you showed there with the wood screw and, and the uh, machine threads on the other end, that's called a hanger bolt. Yes. Uh, and I've seen it called a hanger bolt. A hanger bolt. Put that in the wood, then you got the, the Machine screw thread on the end. And okay. Oh, that uh, that nail with the thread on it. Ah, thanks a lot. Because when I looked it up in the dictionary, it said um, stair bolt or hanger bolt, and I didn't know which one is the right one. But a hanger bolt is better than. Okay. Yeah, that's familiar around here. So a hanger bolt and a Nelson stud. And the thing in the middle, depending on your thread, could be off of a. I don't know what you call it, but it's uh, you get them at the hardware for uh, adjusting screen doors so you don't sag. They have a reversing threads on either end. That's a turnbuckle. Thank you. That's right. A turn that turnbuckle would have left and right. This this piece may not have the left and right. No, that's just one one direction. And yeah. um, they sell them in Germany, for example, for um, uh, for plumbing installation. When they hang um, pipes on ceilings, they um, and they need to adjust the the height or maybe make it longer. They put these in between, so the, um, the stud goes into the ceiling, for example, and then they put these in between, and then a bit of um, threaded rod, and then they have their fixing that they put around the the pipe. I that see. would probably be called a, a connector nut yep. rather than a connector nut. Uh, they'll often be hex or there'll be a hex section in the middle so you can put a wrench yeah, on. Yeah, there are hex ones. That, that... Yeah, we have the hex ones in Germany as well, but I like the round ones for the tool better. Um, yeah. So I try to get round ones, by, but they are not as common as the hex ones. You're right. Okay, great. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks, Kai. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, now let me see. Jim Laporte, you're waving your hand. You're muted, Jim. Yeah, you're still muted. Sorry, I was just congratulating. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask a question or offer some more. On anybody else on small tools that you that you want to say before we move on? It's almost half the hour. Uh, do do you use um? Uh, magnifying uh, lenses on your glasses to see that smaller thing when you're turning? Yes, yes, I do. Um, I have um, special glasses that I use instead of my normal glasses and they have um, magnification of two. So it's twice the size then. You use surgical loops? Yeah, something like that. Um, I, it's, a, it's a cheap one that I bought on the flea market, but it works pretty well. Uh, my dentist has a nice one that he uses for root work if he um, has to uh, look very closely, but that's more than a thousand euros in Germany, so um, that's too expensive for me. It would be nice to have one of these, but the, the cheap one <laughs> with a magnification of two is all right for me. And I have visors that go up and down that have those level of magnifications that work pretty well in that situation. Yeah. 
I also have a loop lamp that I can look through, but I find the glass is more flexible than the, the loop lamp. So, um, yeah. You find yourself moving your head up and down to stay in focus, <laughs> whatever you're doing. <laughs> well, well, that's okay. essential, yeah. At, at least in my age, it's getting more and more essential to um, to use loops and special classes and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm going to move on from this now. Thank you again, Kai. That was a great little show.